which is the um, organization for the membership of the Bishop Museum. And we with the Bishop Museum um, are so glad to see you here this evening, and I hope you've had a chance to, to enjoy and be intrigued by our new exhibit, Planet Shark. Who's seen it yet? Oh, I have lots to talk about it tonight. And indeed, we're quite fortunate to have a, a world expert on sharks to talk with us. Um, so, I, <clears throat> so this evening we'll be, share, be having a presentation done by um, Dr. Carl Meyer from the University of Hawaii's internationally renowned Hawaii Institute for Marine Biology. And Dr. Meyer's research focuses on the ecology and management of sharks. He studies the movement patterns, habitat use, and trophic ecology of sharks and their navigational abilities. His research addresses a variety of issues of management concern, including the impact of shark ecotourism, shark predation, and on critical endangered species effectiveness of the marine protected areas, and the impact of human recreational activities. Um, when I was, I, I work at the University of Hawaii in the, the uh, medical school, and what was, one of the things I was intrigued by his work was we share a common instrument. Um, I, part of the studies I do use a accelerometer, a physical activity measure of humans, and he uses an accelerometer on sharks. Um, so that we both track physical activity and where people go and um, what they do. Um, meet people and sharks. <laughs> so the other, um, at the request of Dr. Meyer, we arranged for an oli um, to be presented tonight about sharks. Um, oli Willy Willy is a fairly well known but uncommonly presented oli. And Kalama Kavigan from um, Halau Nere and will be presenting that tonight and that ties the blooming of the Wee Wee plant, the native plant here in Hawaii, with the biting of sharks. the shark bites, it mentions 
the narrator being bitten by a great shark, Mano Nui, throughout the chant. And it also mentions specifically the Hui, which is a term for a great man-eating shark. So it says, only Hui with a flaming eye flashing in the deep sea. Now, intriguingly, if we look at some contemporary shark bite data, in this case from Maui, we can see that more shark bites occur during the month of November, uh, month of October, sorry, than at any other time of the year. And sure enough, that top month for shark bites falls within the blooming period for the Billy Billy tree. Now, knowledge passed to us through oral tradition, such as the Billy Billy chant, is ultimately based on observations of shark behavior. People saw sharks biting, people saw the flowers blooming, put it together, and uh, recorded it to pass down to future generations in, in the form of a chant. Now, observing sharks is actually very difficult because they live, in, they live in this concealing environment of the ocean, so you can't really see what they're doing and you can't observe their natural behavior very easily. There's probably sharks under there somewhere, but we cannot see them. So our research group uses technology to pierce the veil and to reveal the hidden lives of sharks. Here we're attaching a satellite transmitter to the dorsal fin of a shark off Kihei Maui. And the satellite transmitter is a device that gives us a broad overview of shark movements. And any time the shark sticks its fin above the surface, the transmitter sends off a signal to the satellite, and that's how we're able to follow their uh, movements around the ocean. And I actually brought one of these transmitters along tonight, and I'm going to pass it around so you guys can take a closer look. Now if we take a look at all of the satellite uh, detections of tiger sharks from our recent study that we conducted around Maui and Oahu, you can see that some individuals are ranging far, far out into open ocean. And indeed, some of these tiger sharks don't come in close to land very often. They spend most of their time in open ocean. But most of the satellite detections of tiger